Wondering if digestive enzymes can help you with your gut issues? Listen to this. Our next caller is Alexandra from New York. Alexandra, how can we help you? Hey, guys. Um, so I'm calling in because I was listening to a recent episode where you guys were advertising masszymes. Um, and I, I have to admit, I don't know much about these digestive enzymes, um, but the way it was described in the episode really spoke to me in that um, it sounded like, you know, if you have uh, problems digesting protein or things like that, it can really help. Um, and so, so candidly, that's an issue that I've kind of always had. Um, and I, I don't think it's like a particularly big deal for me personally, but there are times when I would like to eat more protein to put on more muscle mass, but I struggle because I can easily get, you know, constipated. Um, so I just try not to eat too much protein. Anyways, when I heard about mass zymes, I thought that maybe this is something I should try. Um, but you know, I have a couple of concerns because from what I've heard from other people, not about mass zymes specifically, but just about digestive enzymes in general, which is one, when you take them, they can kind of make you go to the bathroom a lot more, um, you know, like shit more. Mm -hmm. um, and I know what you mean. so one is, is <laughs> that, done that before. Do, do you think that's true? And then, um, and then a follow up to that is if you do start taking them, um, do you think you would kind of start relying on them? to go to the bathroom more. Um, I wouldn't want to get like hooked on them. Yeah. So yeah, th that's my two part question. Yeah. Good question. Okay. So, uh, digestive enzymes can definitely help with digestive issues. If the issue is you need more digestive enzymes for your diet. So if the issue is that you have, I don't know, small intestinal, um, bacterial overgrowth, or you're eating a food that you're intolerant to, or you're lacking fiber, or here's a big one. You're not drinking enough water then it might not help that much. So if it is indeed a, that you need more digestive enzymes, I would say they're inexpensive. Try it out and see if it helps. But if it's not that, it could be something else. It could be what you're eating. It could be lack of fiber. It could be lack of water. Um, it could be stress. It could be a lot of different issues that can be causing digestive issues. Now, as far as becoming reliant on them, no, you're not going to become reliant. There's no negative feedback loop that I'm aware of with digestive enzymes where if you consume them, your body, you know, produces less of them. So probably what happened with your friend, my guess is that she, she used them, they helped and she continued to eat foods that would normally cause her problems. So then when she stopped taking the enzymes, then she gets those problems back. So the answer for her might've been to change the foods that she was eating in the first place. I, I hope that makes some, some well, sense. Well, I didn't, I didn't mess with this at all until you actually, cause you're, you're notorious for carrying around all your little your little vitamin purse that you have, mm -hmm. and every time we would eat something off the- It's a, it's a merse. Yeah. It's we, for men. You would eat these uh, digestive enzymes, and I thought, you know what? We were, I think one night we were at the Tahoe place, we were getting ready to eat either pizza or something that had a lot of gluten, and I, I asked you guys, because Justin does too, I see him uh, use it, and I'm like, mm -hmm. you know- it doesn't uh, like when I eat pizza, it doesn't destroy me, but it definitely, if I have more than like four slices, it could, it could ruin my night for sure. It right. A lot of our nights when you do that. So, um, I, I, I asked to try it and I noticed a significant difference in how I responded yeah. to the pizza. So I've, so now I try and if I ever, I'm going to eat like ice cream or gluten, two things that I know that I have intolerance to, um, by doing that, it doesn't, I know it doesn't fix the problem. I know it doesn't, but it does mitigate. I feel yeah. the, the effects that I would, I would feel from that. Is that, is that correct? And should that, should that be happening that way? Is that right? Yeah, no, it is. And, and, and it's like, um, I don't know, this is not really a good example, but it's like taking anti-inflammatory right after you use something that's inflammatory. So it can help. But the ultimate issue is that you eat, you know, gluten and ice cream, right? Mm -hmm. That bother you. The way that I use digestive enzymes is I use them when I eat very high protein meals, especially if I'm not eating a lot of vegetables with that. It can make a difference for me. I also use, uh, I'll substitute fiber, so I'll take psyllium husk. That can help. Now, that's what works well for me. For some people, that might not necessarily help. The good thing about digestive enzymes are they're inexpensive and you can try them out and see if they help, but ultimately... Just like any supplement, it's not the ultimate cure, right? The, the ultimate cure is let's figure out at the root of what's going on and then use those in order to mitigate issues 
when maybe you go off or you eat in a way that might normally bother well, that's, you. What would you classify like the HCL pills? Like, and so I, I usually do that to kind of cut back at some of the overgrowth. So that's hy- hydro. Uh, let's see, HCL is, is a hydrochloric acid. Am hydrochloric I saying acid. So, yeah. So it stokes basically you know acid production in your stomach. It is. It is the acid that you produce. Um, but that's not a digestive enzyme. But see, that's another one, right? Yeah. So if you have low HCL. It can create an environment where bacteria actually builds up in your small intestines, and then you start to develop issues. Um, and believe it or not, heartburn is a common side effect of not producing enough uh, yeah, which you know, is what I acid, which yeah. a lot of people think it's the opposite. They think they're making too much acid. Oftentimes, it's you're not making enough acid. So digestive issues tend to be complicated, but digestive enzymes are a very safe, easy inexpensive thing that you can experiment with. And, and the reason why we work with bio-optimizers, masszymes, is because they design them specifically for athletes. So the the enzymes that are good for breaking down the types of foods that we tend to eat a lot of, especially protein, you tend to see more of them in there. And I've messed with a lot of digestive enzymes, and there's a lot of them that are good out there, but they're one of the better ones, and that's why we chose uh, working with them. But no, you won't become, de- you, you won't become def- dependent but if you don't solve the root issue, um, then you may need to use them always whenever you eat foods that tend to cause uh, problems. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. I mean, it sounds to me a little bit um, like there's some trial and error here. I mean, you mentioned a few of the different root causes. Um, you know, I think, for example, water, that's one that I, I feel like I do drink a, a lot of water. Mm-hmm. But, you know, it could be the the, um, the bacterial growth that you're talking about. And, you know, so maybe it's trying the enzymes. If that doesn't help, then maybe exploring other things or, you know, Maybe it's cutting out foods. Maybe there are certain foods that I don't digest well that I, I just don't know about. Um, yeah. So it's probably a little bit of a, a process to get there. Yeah, but it, it sounds like it doesn't hurt to at least try the enzymes. Totally. And Alexandra, the a, a gut health specialist is worth their weight in gold. Yes. Okay, because let's say you do have SIBO, right? Um, you can fix it. You can actually cure it. You might be have you might have lived with it for you know five years. It's something that's curable, right? Um, digestive experts or gut health experts are so valuable because once you, and I, I'm speaking from personal experience, once you solve some of these issues, the impacts are far ranging on your whole body and your mental well being. I mean, I, I feel better mentally when my digestion yeah, is your good. results in the gym too. Oh my God. Mm-hmm. I, it, there's a six, six to seven pound weight difference in me when my gut health is good versus when it's not. So I, I, I suggest finding a good gut health specialist. And it's, it's, there's a lot of testing involved. You'll probably have to do a stool test. You'll probably have to do some blood tests and you might even have to do an, you know, endoscopy or whatever, depending on the situation, but totally worth it. So that's, that's where I would send you first, but the digestive enzymes doesn't hurt. You can, you can throw that in very safe supplement. Um, and again, very inexpensive and it it won't hurt to try. Awesome. Yeah. I'll I'll definitely do that. Thanks guys. Thanks Alexandra. Appreciate it. You know, what's funny is that, um, it wasn't that long ago. Maybe like I know when we started the podcast, nobody in fitness talked about uh, digestive issues. Oh, nobody. Yeah. In fact, it was well, just gut, just something you worked through. Yeah, and it was actually accepted. Like, oh yeah, you eat a lot of protein. That's why you know whatever. Or, you know, it, it it wasn't accepted. It wasn't um, uh, an issue that anybody talked about. Then it, people started become aware, and some people started to fix their issues, and they found how profound it was. So I'm glad that people now ask these questions and are paying attention because. I think for a long time, people just took antacids or mm-hmm. took, you know, um, stool softeners or, you know, uh, things for diarrhea. And they just took them regularly thinking this is just the way I am. Um, and no, there's a root cause for all that stuff. Well, what I find amazing, too, is that I, I think a lot of people don't realize how much it can play a factor in your results, too. I mean, it, it could be slowing down your results as far <laughs> as fat loss. It could be slowing down... Mm-hmm. It can uh, your, affect your metabolism. Yes. For sure. Oh, yeah. Your performance and your strength. Like, if uh, if your body is having to work overtime to fix issues that are going on in your gut, it doesn't have the energy and resources to go and help you build muscle or help your metabolism speed up. Right. So, same difference. So, if if you don't address that, and then you're just kind of piling, oh, what's the latest fat burner? Oh, what's the best? Yep. You know, muscle building supplement. You're just trying all these other things. Versus, why don't we why don't we get to the bottom Let's of what's get going on first? Yeah, get healthy first, <laughs> and then you know, like we say, chase health, and the aesthetics will follow. Yeah, I mean, nutrient deficiencies are common with people with gut health issues, and they'll take supplements and everything, yeah. and find out why am I lacking vitamin B or D or whatever? Your gut is not absorbing it. It's a big deal. Hey, if you enjoyed that clip, you can find the full episode here or you can find other clips over here. And be sure to subscribe.